Hey Lieben, what's good, what's going on? It's Yesh here, yeshoboyton.com with just a quick video. I haven't been on here in quite a while, but I felt like the Lord giving me a word for my audience, for the people out there on YouTube, the people that listen to me. It's a word for the season. It's a word for the body of Christ. It's not going to be a teaching. It's not going to be, you know, the typical YouTube video of three things to do this or, you know, how to do that. It's a word from the Bible that I feel like God is speaking right now to the body of Christ, not just here in America, but all around the globe. I'm going to have two scriptures. The first one is in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and the other one is in Proverbs. Well, let's get to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. God is saying, if my people that are called by my name, that's you and me, brother and sister, if we humble ourselves, truly come to ourselves and get honest before God, as Jesus says, if we worship, we can only connect with God's spirit in the spirit and in truth. If we really come to ourselves in truth, judge ourselves and humble ourselves before God, pray and seek God's face, not just Pray our normal devotions, read our normal Bible stuff. No, really seek his face and turn from our, our wicked ways. If we turn from our ways, our program, what we always did, what we always used to do, if we come away from us and come back to God, then God will hear from you. Then God will forgive you. And then God will heal the land. If you're wondering what's going on right now, come away from your program seek the Lord. If you need a word from God right now, come away from your ways, humble yourself before God, repent of your sin, and seek the Lord. He will hear from heaven and you will hear from him. If you want all this that's going on to go, <laughs> then you, brother and sister, then I need to come before God and humble ourselves. And then God promised he will heal the land. If you want what's going on right now, the stuff that's going on in the world, really to go, we need to do exactly this. Humble yourself, come to God in fasting and prayer, and turn from your wicked ways. Turn off social media, turn off all the stuff, or your program, or your things, and come to God. Not in your normal devotions, no, I mean like outside of the normal stuff. I believe we're in a intense time right now of preparation for for worse things that are down the lo down the road and god is calling you and me brother and sister into fasting and prayer and repentance and intercession and here's why <clears throat> go with me to proverbs 6 uh verses 16 through 19 these six things the lord hates the lord god hates yes seven are an abomination to him an absolute detest for the worst thing that you could do a proud look Pride, being haughty, looking down on others. Oh, I don't need this. Oh, I don't need to pray now. Oh, I can pray later. Oh, I can I can read my Bible tomorrow. Oh, I can do this later. I don't need to seek God right now. I just, you know, I just do what I think is right and then it's going to be okay. God, God is a great God of grace. You know, I'm just, oh my goodness. She's doing this, like looking down on others. A proud look. God hates pride. God hates and detests pride. And how much pride do we have in the body of Christ? How many pastors, how many members, how many denominations are just fighting each other just out of their prideful hearts? A lying tongue, how much lying do we have in the body of Christ? How much half-truths are going on everywhere about anything? Lying about pastors, lying about, you know, people in church, or even just the neighbor, or whoever. So much lying going on. It's as if even Christians can't tell the truth anymore. Pastors can't tell the truth anymore or can't tell the truth from the lie because it's so intermingled and so, so lukewarm. Hands that shed innocent blood is the next one. How much death we have going on in the body of Christ? How many people are okay with abortions? Christians. How many people don't raise a voice against abortion? Abortion is murder in the mother's womb. It is murder. If you're not agreeing with me, that's between you and God, but I believe this is exactly one of those things. Hands that shed innocent blood. And if we don't raise our voice and say, and don't say anything against it, 
we are agreeing with it. If you stay silent, you agree with it. A heart that devises wicked plans. How many members in the church and maybe even people in leadership devise their little plans, maybe just in their heart, maybe even with other people, just to get that one person out of church or that one leader out of his position or whatever it is. Maybe with some lying, maybe with some discord, as we see later here also in the scripture, maybe some half-truths there, maybe some gossip over here. Oh, Gertrude, have you heard? This and that. <laughs> Sam has said this. Oh, we gotta pray for him. This is something God hates. That's an abomination to him. And that stuff is going on in the church. Feet that are swift in running to evil. That's verse 18. Second part of verse 18. Feet that are swift in running to evil. How fast are Christians running in their problems, in their distress, in their in their trouble, not even thinking of God, not even thinking about what the Bible says, the promises of God say, what God is actually saying in this season to them, or wants to tell them in the season. Running to doctors, running to medicine, running to the hospitals, the ER. Now, granted, obviously, in emergencies, go to the ER, please, don't get me wrong here. But my point is that you go first to the world, then going to God. Have you ever considered praying for your issue, the trouble, your situation? first and then maybe thinking about other options why did you not give god your first thought here's one way satan works he's always going to put you in a bad situation trouble challenge attack whatever it's going to be but then he's going to always give you a way out that's how he works he always works both ways he attacks you from one side and then he's going to give you a solution on the other but if you take that solution is going to be end up ending up being a curse itself. But why not just pushing all this aside and going right straight to God, humbling yourself, asking for forgiveness, repenting, seeking his face and praying and turning from your wicked way. And then he will hear, then he will forgive, and then he will heal you and the land. That's what God's word just said. We just read it. The next one, verse 19, a false witness who speaks lies. This is the same thing. A similar thing to what we read in the in the verse um, 17, the, the, in the middle part, a lying tongue, but this is a little bit different. A false witness who speaks lies. What came to mind here was that we as servants of God are called to witness for God, to bear witness for God. But if we bear a bad witness for God by showing off our bad side, maybe among worldly people or, you know, whatever, you know, lying and gossiping ourselves and doing all the stuff that the world does themselves. We are a bad witness, a false witness for the gospel. How is God going to use you in that, in that attitude? How can God use you in that attitude? But, and yet, Christians do that all the time. And I see Christians being even worse than the world. The world at least help, help themselves and help each other out in their situations and at least pretend to be loving. And it seems like that with Christians, they have such a hardened heart, so full of pride, so full of hatred, so full of anger and jealousy and witchcraft, this manipulation and disobedience and, and all this stubbornness towards God and to their leadership that they just such a bad witness, such a wrong witness that then end up speaking lies in the name of God. Oh yeah, God's gonna bless you. Oh, God loves you. Oh, God's grace. God's grace will cover everything. Oh, really? 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 See, God, yes, is a merciful God, and yes, God is a God of grace. Mercy as in forgiveness and grace as in empowerment. Yes, he is. Yes, his blood was shed, Jesus' blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sin. This is not a condemning message. If we turn, again, if we turn from our ways and seek him, ask for forgiveness, humble ourselves, he does forgive. That's his promise. That's, this is a call to repentance that I'm giving you here. But don't abuse it. Jesus says, the ones that love me, the ones that are my friends, the ones that abide in me, they bring fruit, they obey me, they do what I tell them. That's John 15. If you love him, you keep his commandments. If you really say you are a believer, those signs shall follow you. If you really say you're a servant of God, you ought to bring fruit. But if we don't, we will be chopped off and cast into the fire. I don't care what position you have. I don't care what title you have or you don't have. It's for everyone equal. And then the last one that God hates and that is an abomination to him is one who sows discord among brethren. And how much do we have that 
in the body of Christ. You just have to go. I'm living here in America at the moment, and I mean, there's there are more denominations among those denominations than you can count. I mean, there are so many sub denominations, under denominations, under denominations, because there is so much discord because of all kind of foolishness. But God says He hates it. It's an abomination to Him, and all these things we can see in the body of Christ, and I'm calling the body of Christ, at least the ones that listen to me, to come to God, to come to yourself, but then come to God. Judge yourself on the things that are going, not going according to plan, God's plan. Come to yourself and then come to God. Humble yourself before Him. Seek His face. Fast and pray. I urge you to fast and pray in this season. There's worse things down the line, but I feel like God impressing me to call the people that listen to me, to fasting and prayer, to a real turn in that course, whatever you thought you had going on right now and you thought, oh, everything is fine now because you got what solution you thought would work. Forget about all that. Forget about the solutions the world gives you. Forget about all of this. What is God saying to you right now? What is God saying to the body of Christ right now? Do you know that? You would and you will if you do Second Chronicles 7. Verse 14. This was just a quick video. Um, this is not a word of condemn condemnation. Again, God is a forgiving God. God is a loving God, but he's righteous. And he's not going to, like, he's slow to anger. When I prayed and when I really sought the Lord and he gave me these verses, I felt God, I felt God angry. And I felt God really, like, his anger building up. Not like he's at the at the end <laughs> of his his patience, but it's like, He's really upset. I mean, more than upset. He's he's getting angry, and it's like a building. Like as it says, he's slow to anger. But I felt like he's really, really upset. Not with the world. The world is doing what they always did, and you know they have the plans that they always have. But with the <laughs> with the body of Christ and how they are reacting to the world, that they are not standing in their authority, that they keep on in their wicked ways. Us and me included. I mean. I'm not saying it's you guys or, you know, it's out there. It's I'm part of the body. If one suffers, we all suffer. And I'm calling all of us to a time of prayer and fasting. I mean, intense, not just, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to pray five minutes more in the, in the morning. I mean, like dedication. And you know exactly what that means for your life. I don't need to, you know, give you the five steps of what it means to fast and pray. If you're someone in Christ... Follow of Christ, you know what fasting and prayer is. At least you should be. This is this time right now. This is the season we're in right now. I believe with all my heart. And I urge you to get ready. There's more stuff coming down the line. This is nothing, what we have seen here. And get yourself ready, man. Repent, turn, and give your heart to God. Give your everything to God. I hope this blessed you. Share this video with a friend that you think needs to hear this message. I pray that God would touch you. I pray that God would really speak to you in this time. That God would help you to come before his face. <laughs> as funny as that sounds. But that God would give you that grace, that empowerment. That God would meet you halfway. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would really touch the audience right now in this very moment. That you would take away every lie. I, I rebuke every lie right now in Jesus' name. That the enemy has spoken to my audience people that listen to this right now, I rebuke and silence every religious spirit speaking all his lies and all his, ah, oh, you don't this and he's that and the other. I rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now that you stretch out your hand for signs, wonders, and miracles, for healing and deliverance where it is needed right now in, in my audience listening to me. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move that you would touch and that you would call us, that you would give the, us this urge to fast and pray. God, I pray that you would confirm this word if it truly is from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Always remember to keep your eyes on the prize. I'll see you in the next video.